And so, we have not talked about video games aside from ours for a while. What's funny is that uh, my, I guess my my sort of director related uh, habits still very much continued into my like academic career, and I guess it was a, a lot of time I didn't have much of a choice because you know, I, as I said before, my games got like you know voted. Mm -hmm. But then when I got to a proper like four year school, it took me forever to actually even get into any game design classes, oh. and any proper game design classes where we were working on projects again, it wasn't until my very last semester at school that we were able to do anything like that. Mm. Which sucked, but that's, that's how it goes, I guess. Yeah. But at the same rate, you're actually a really good manager, my dude. Thank you. There was, um, I think one technique that we maybe could have done better in our game, I learned about this thing called, like, uh, gray boxing. Oh, yeah, I think you mentioned that to me once when we were tr thinking about doing yet another game. I still want to do that game, by the way. Oh, fully. I just need to figure out time to do it. Yeah, me too. The, um, gray boxing, it's basically the practice of, like, creating a, um, a playable prototype for a game entirely in the absence of necessary, uh, aesthetic assets. So, rather than having, like, an enemy model, you'll just have, like, a square. Like, basically everything is, like, squares and rectangles and shit. Right, right, right. And the idea of it is that you can... Is that even without a lot of the necessary assets, you can just... You can make something playable and cool. Hmm. Yeah, you have talked to me about that. Yeah. I kept trying to do that <laughs> in, um... In one of the... In my, uh, game design class... That I took at like the four year school. Mm -hmm. I kept trying to do that and I kept trying to tell people it's like 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 the person who the actual programmer kept being like, Oh well we need uh, this first. And I'm like, no, the point is just make it out of squares. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God I I don't know what kind of design I'm doing in on this poncho, but uh I'm liking it. Ooh yes. Yes go on. Yes go on. Wait, a poncho? Hey, why are you wearing a poncho? PMD. Because the Pokemon within PMD, and I'm drawing Pokemon, by the way, uh, they all do this thing where, like, the main character is separated from the others because they wear a scarf. And I was just like, you know what? That I'm just going to be wearing, like, a cover, a and punch. I'm going to be looking sexy, and, well, okay, I, I, don't, I, probably shit, shit. I probably shouldn't say that because the Pokemon are not real, and also they're, I'm not a furry. You're scaly. No, I am not a scaly. That's just something I know, okay? You're a scaly. No! I don't want to be! <laughs> you might not want to be, but I, I know just who you are. Making games when you actually are able to get into the process and actually get something that, like, you're, you're actually able to have something made, mm -hmm. it's like the funnest stuff. Oh yeah, fully. It's great. I just completely interrupted you, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, my dude. You're, You're fine. Ye. You're fine, bruh. Ye. So tell us about those video games that you made, if you if you can. I don't really know what the pro policy on that is. Yeah, um, so the... Like, like, what the games themselves were? Yeah, like, what did they, what'd you do? What were, the, what were they about? Yeah, so the first game was, uh, was like, um... It, it, it started off as a paper prototype project. Hmm. Um, and it was basically, I, I called it, I called it Cunning Crusader. Ooh. And the, the idea of the game was that you play as, um, the idea of the, the board game version, at least, mm -hmm. was that you, um, yeah. there's four different play, it's, it's, it's a four player player co-op game. Okay. And you, uh, play as four different types of pirates. There is the, uh. The Metal Duster, who can, like, move the most spaces in a turn. He, like, runs the fastest, and he's got, like... I th I think I made him one of the weaker ones, if I remember correctly, but... I think I actually remember seeing the design on that. Yeah, so there was the Knuckle Duster. He was the fast guy. I, I did stream the creation of some of their sprites, like, a very long time ago. Um, There was the, the Cutlass, who was the strongest but slowest of the bunch. So he could take out... Like, he, he couldn't move many spaces, but he could take out a lot of enemies, so... Hmm. 
you would have to sort of strategically have him be the one to engage with enemies and whatnot. Right. There was the, um, let's see if I can remember, there was the Sneaky Dagger, my personal favorite one. Oh yeah, I remember you like having a ball and trying to design Sneaky Dagger and talking about Sneaky Dagger. You were just like, yes, go on. Not like that, because uh, you, you don't do that. Sneaky Dagger had the ability to sneak past enemy spaces, I believe. Hmm. Uh, he was, he was the, the, I believe he was the weakest one. And the, the enemies just ignored him, basically, because you could sneak past them. Mm -hmm. Or at least maybe you had a chance of sneaking past them. I don't, I, again, I don't fully remember. Mm -hmm. But, um, the last one was the gunslinger, who I believe could attack enemies at range. Mm -hmm. So if you were a few spaces away from an enemy, you could get an attack on them. Cool. And the point of the game was that there was there were these treasure I I I would set up a board, put treasure icons all over, mm -hmm. and then you know just have them roll. There would be like enemy spaces and like other different types of spaces with their own little like effects. Mm -hmm. And I would set a time limit, and the goal for the game for each of the for the team of crusaders would be to collect all the treasure on the ship before time runs out or collect as much as you can and then get back to uh to base and it was it was really fun because um there was there was one round in particular where it was the be it was like the guy who was playing as i think the knuckle duster got knocked out and they hadn't collected all the treasure and there was like a part where like time was running out and they're like shoot we we haven't gotten all this treasure but we don't have enough time and like the knuckle duster guy was like, just just get the treasure without me, you guys. It's fine. And they're like, no, we leave no man behind. And they saved the knuckle duster player, and like ended the game. But like like they didn't get the last treasure, but they saved their friend, and they were happy with that. Aww. Cute. And I was like, I'm like, that's a nice that like, it was it was very fun. It's really nice when you actually when you when you design a game with the with an intended like purpose mm -hmm. with with an intended effect on players and it actually like works yeah the second game i made is called was called bottoms up oh yeah i remember that one yes that was about a um a ghost and the ghost had the ability to basically it, it was basically a puzzle game where the where you're kind of traveling around a spooky mansion trying to explore trying to find out you know the lore of the place and you could switch between walking on either the ceiling or the ground hmm. and i tried explaining <laughs> I, when i first tried explaining it to people they were like they, they didn't really get it hmm. but i but i made an animatic of the game and it's got to be extra just a little bit extra yeah i made an animatic for the game and everyone was like was like okay now i get it and now i want to work on this <laughs> that was very rewarding because i made it because i made like that that was another thing that's like satisfying is like i initially made a bad impression because mm -hmm. they couldn't understand what my game was but then i managed to get it to a point where they actually liked it cool that is the power of having a college degree yeah so I'm guessing your favorite video game of all time is Super Smash Brothers. It is not. Oh, what? My favorite game of all time is Bioshock. Good choice. A very good choice. Yes. Okay, uh, I will say this now that I'm remembering it. Believe it or not, in spite of me like really, really liking to play games, I haven't actually played very many games that aren't Nintendo games. I, I'm, a, I'm a gamer that doesn't like to play games. What's wrong with me? Honestly, that's kind of the same way it is with me, which is which is pretty bad considering that I have like a channel dedicated to games. Not to mention you have a game design degree. Degree. You have a you have a degree. <laughs> yeah, it just I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a fraud. <laughs> it's like yeah, I'm gonna play video. I'm gonna get, make a gaming design in the videos of the degree. I, I don't know what the fuck I just said. Well, 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 that's actually why I generally stick to... I, I don't normally do general topics. That being said, I do have a list that is about a pretty general topic coming up. 
Oh, but, yeah. uh, what is it? Inquiring minds don't want to know. Specifically me. What is it? Well, well, I guess it's 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 a it's a Halloween list. Oh. And it's gonna be the spooky levels or top, scary levels in video top games. Top ten spooks in video gooks. Yes. You Yoink. got it. That's gonna be the exact title. Really? Yes. <laughs> no. <clears throat> so actually, since we are on the topic of video games, what video games have you played in general? Like, generally speaking. Uh, like, as of recently? Uh, no, I mean, just, like, over the course of your entire lifetime. What got you into video games? Um, what got me into video games? That's actually a pretty... Actually, you know what? I just realized, I think it was actually you that first brought up the idea of pursuing game design as a career of any form. <laughs> to me. Hmm. I, I do remember that. Because I don't... I don't think I ever considered the idea that I could do that. <laughs> Because, you know, I grew up my entire life viewing games as something very, like, frivolous, you know? Mm -hmm. So it never occurred to me, I'm like, that could be that, that could be a career. Mm. Like, damn. Oh, that yeah. is nice. What the f***? Take that back. <laughs> never. Mm. <laughs> and I, I, I don't really watch as many um, game cr gaming uh, critics as I used to. Hmm. But I think, you know, that and just some of the games that, like, really kind of... Because they were a huge part of uh, my childhood. Mm -hmm. Like, my, my brother and I had, like, an N64 that was our first console. Aww. Yeah. I was a greedy little bitch. I had, a, I had my own Game Boy Advance, and when my brother wanted to play it, I was just like, no, get your own. And so he did. <laughs> <laughs> it was, my, my brother also hogged the shit out of our consoles. You know, now that I'm like speaking about my childhood, I can kind of understand why I was just like, no, mine's better with, with, with like the, our entire video game process. I've just always been that. <laughs> I was not a good child. I still, I still love you. Oh, I love you too. Positive, <laughs> positive masculinity. Shocking. <laughs> what? What did I do? <laughs> just, you're just flamboyant as f**k, my dude. Oh, fully. And that was this episode of the Drawcast. Did we stay on topic? No. Sort of. Eh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. I still need to figure out like all of this stuff anyway. So it's probably best that we just kind of do whatever the hell we want, then see where it goes. Anyway, yeah. my name is Biosic C, and I failed the Turing test again. My, my name is Wombu. Peace out, Girl Scouts. <laughs>